Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. So one day into my ownership of the brand new Tudor Black Bay ceramic black black black. Let's dig a bit deeper into the, the features and compare it to other watches from the Black Bay line that I happen to own. I'm sure many of you will be interested into the thickness of the watch. Now I have to say that my initial reaction to the release was similar to quite a few people's. Blacked out watches are usually sort of a last ditch by brands, just a one more colorway before dumping a model. But in this case, I think it's uh, quite the contrary with this Tudor, because under the hood and around the, the watch, into some details, there's a lot going on. And I feel like perhaps this is a milestone of independence for Tudor mechanically and stylistically. At the mid case, you know that uninterrupted portion of the side of the case, the height of the new ceramic model is 6.5 millimeter, placing it right in the middle of the GMT model, which was seven millimeters, and the Black Bay 58, which was six millimeters. And it's something you see immediately. It's apparent to the eyes. And maybe the black color makes it look even thinner. And usually you think about the thickness of a watch when, when you notice it. And in this case, I just don't think about it at all, which means I just don't notice it. I think the balance of the proportions is perfect and my wrists are 17 centimeters six and three quarter inches to me this watch is perfectly at home now the total height is stated i saw on the internet above 14 millimeters i think 14.3 or 14.4 but really when i look at it myself with uh, my little ruler here, I see 12 millimeters from the underbelly to the crystal and another 1.5 millimeters maximum for the crystal itself. So it, it feels more 12 than 14, especially because the underbelly is just gonna nestle into the skin of your wrist. Now one thing here, this watch is impossible to render in pictures properly. It is very difficult because there's no AR coating and the black is not deep enough to just suck out the light. So very difficult to give you the exact impression that you have in person. There's a, a great aura to this watch and like many watches, when you see them in person, you just change your tune. Now the accuracy, this watch is METAS certified. It has a master chronometer certification and so far it is acing it. In one day, it has barely gained one second. The case, something I love about this ceramic case is the polished bevel, the same as you find on a steel black bay. How cool is that? Now it smudges easily, but you can also wipe it off with a finger easily. Now the bezel insert is also ceramic and I love the brushed finish on it. The bezel itself is made of, uh, of steel, I believe, PVD coated. So is the clasp, so is the crown. Some people lament about that, but I think there's a limit to what you can put into a watch for 4,500 US dollars. So if it keeps the cost in check, to me visually, it's fine. Now the writing on the dial is interesting. The depth rating, we know it is 200 meters, but it's not on the dial. Instead, they put the Black Bay name for the first time, which is weird because we know it's a Black Bay. And then they added Master Chronometer, which is a very long line. I would have gone without the Black Bay and just put Master on top and Chronometer at the bottom, which would have had a nice balance, two lines to balance the Tudor Genève of the upper side of the dial. Now the loom, I think is the perfect color. It's not 
it doesn't feel like faux patina. It is not perfect white, it's slightly off-white, but I would not call that faux patina, and I think it works perfectly better than if it was pure white. Now the bezel has great feel, great click action, slightly different than the other black base, but in the same realm. It aligns perfectly and there's no play. One of the best bezels right now. Let's move on to the strap. So the strap is a mix of calf and rubber. I'm not a big fan of straps, to be, to be honest with you. Uh, usually rubber gives me a rash after a while, especially in hot weather. I remember being very miserable with uh, Seiko SKX that I put on a well-known rubber strap brand. After two, three days, I just had all sort of rashes all around my wrist. Not a pretty sight. But otherwise, at home, in the air conditioning, it's fine and I wore the watch all night, no problem. It's, uh, it's a good looking strap. It's, uh, it's got a nice thickness to, to it. However, it, the watch comes with a, a sort of a fabric strap, sort of a, a NATO, which it just goes underneath the watch once, so it stays very slim and close to the, close to the, to the skin. But to put it on, you need to remove this rubber strap and that's going to be very tough to do without damage to the strap or to the watch. I know it's ceramic and should be able to handle a, a little touch from uh, a metal tool, but I don't really want to take that risk and uh, I don't want to damage the, the very nice strap because you really need to push into it to remove it because there's just no, no gap at all. Now the clasp itself you have to fiddle a bit to to put it on but i think if you keep your wrist up it's it's okay now let's talk about where this watch stands in the competition i think tudor is really bringing the heat at the under five thousand dollar and they're really pushing in a new direction that rolex was not really covering of course the big headline is the metas certification the certification from the Institute of Metrology in Switzerland, something that was really owned by Omega and is the first brand to challenge Omega. And what's great for Rolex is that it's the sister, little baby brand that goes and passes the test with that fantastic new caliber, which I think looks great. For once, I think you really want to see that caliber. The finishing is just so cool, all blacked out there. And well, the performance is there. It's uh, anti-magnetic up to 15,000 Gauss, accuracy zero to, to five seconds a day. Mine is running almost on the dot so far. Power reserve, 70 hours. Omega is still Omega. Omega is great. I think Omega makes uh, great indices, great dial details, beautiful cases as well. And it, I think it's worth the, the money. And maybe second hand Seamasters will come close to Tudor retail. But Tudor is smart to keep the retail price in check so they can manage to sell at retail. Now, availability. I got mine on the first day. I, I was lucky I got a call from my authorized dealer. It seems that Tudor tends to do that. They send one or two pieces all around the world to their ADs and get free Instagram exposure, especially from me. And it gives you the impression that the watches are around, they're there to be, to be taken. But then people need to line up for the next batch for a few weeks or months and it inflates the buzz. And I feel for my friend, there in Dubai, a couple of them reached out to me on my Instagram account, Optic Watch Reviews, of course. It's a monopoly, uh, Rolex Tudor at least, and I think other brands, there's only one family uh, has the monopoly of the distribution over there. And this watch, a Tudor, not a limited edition, is on wait list, but not just that, it's only if you have a spending history there. 
Now, there's good and bad about that. Good thing is that while well, there's a waitlist, you can put your name on it. They want you to spend money there at the dealer rather than go and buy on the second-hand market. Maybe go pay the premium on the second-hand market for, for Rolex. They want you to buy what's in the store and then you can get your Rolex. In, in a way, it keeps in check the second-hand market. But at the same time, you just want to buy one Tudor, one lousy Tudor, <laughs> I want to say. Do you have to jump through hoops? What young man, you know, who wants a nice watch? $5,000 maybe is his budget. He, he can't buy a bunch of watches for his girlfriends, for his wives and all that. He doesn't have that kind of, uh, of, of, of spending capacity. He just wants one watch. So what, now it's Tudor is out of range. I guess it's going to take uh, a few weeks, a few months. It's going to have to be patient. I wouldn't go crazy. I mean, most brands look at Longines or Omega. They announce something and it's not available for six months to a year. I think the James Bond watch took a year to be delivered and Omega boutiques wanted you to put a deposit and now the watch is in every window. So it's, it's a bit of a, of a nasty trick there from, from Tudor to put a few watches on the market, whet your appetite and then make you beg for them, make you long for them. But, but I've always said that I think watch brands should not announce something and deliver it long after the buzz is, is over, right? They should announce it and deliver it right away. So I hope and I think Tudor will deliver enough watches. Just be a bit patient right now. All those authorized dealers all around the world, they want to play the scarcity game. They, it's, it's their game. They want to force you to buy something else, you know, to give you the, the watch that you really want. Don't fall into that. I'm sure watches are going to get available. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know what you think about the Tudor Black Bay Ceramic, the black, 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 in the comments. I gotta say, it's a cool watch. It's uh, it's a new market. It's a new level of execution for for Tudor, and uh, it's very exciting. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.